together, hands behind the thighs, make a nice C, and then just coming down one disc, one vertebra at a time, nice and slow. Then once you're all the way down, walk your feet towards your seat, one leg comes up, other leg comes up, interlace your fingers over the shins, and just start to rock from side to side. Squeezing the ankles and squeezing the knees, just very gently pushing through the soles of the feet. And then once you rock from side to side, keeping the knees and the ankles together and just starting to make circles with the knees. Just slow, controlled circles. The more we squeeze our ankles and our knees together, the deeper the release is going to be into the groins. And then swapping your leg and interlacing and changing direction with your circles. Good. 
So let's go back and forth three more times. So this one's to the floor, away from the floor, not to the armpit, away from the armpit. We want to isolate those two movements. And this stuff is really important for you. So hip bone injects, hip bone injects, there you go. Hip bone injects, hip bone injects, there you go. And then stop with that nice neutral pelvis. Pubic bone, hip bones are level. And then the next movement is hip bone to the armpit, away from the armpit. So think right thigh towards the end of the mat, right butt towards the end of the mat, and then think left thigh towards the end of the mat, left butt towards the end of the mat. Right thigh, left thigh. So this is sitting your butt into an imaginary chair. This is front thigh to back thigh. So just going back and forth. So now the hip bones are no longer moving to the floor, away from the floor. They're staying at an even height, but they're moving to the armpit and then away from the armpit. So one hip goes to the armpit as the other one moves away from the armpit and vice versa. And again, raise your hand if you're not finding it. You find it there, see that? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Oh, yeah. And every little movement helps, right? Just to oh, release yeah. it. <laughs> You can't find it, just raise a hand and I'll help. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna do it. Who stop doing things? Front that it back that. 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 So let go. There you go. You feel how it's moving? Good. Now see if you can do that with your own thighs. Yeah. Yeah, totally. This is a good movement for you. And then if I can I just take my hand right here. So then think about sitting into my hand. Take your butt into my hand. And then into my hand. Yep, into my hand. So I think of literally like something being here in New York. Right? Sound effects, very important. <laughs> so let's go back and forth a few more times. And then stop with that nice neutral pelvis. Pubic bone, hip bones level. Remember, if at any point you want it to be less challenging, you can get rid of the blocks. Feet are nice and close to your seat. Arms are beside you, palms are facing down. Really commit to the neutral pelvis. And then just lift your knees over your hip bones. Get your thighs at a 90 degree angle with the floor. And then really press through the feet. If you want to make it more challenging without the thighs moving forward or back, lift your feet so that your shins are level with the floor. And if it's too hard, you bend your knees more or you bring your feet onto the floor. Both are great options. But really think knees right over the hips. Think neutral pelvis. So pubic bone, hip bones, level. Exactly. Nice. We want to think about dropping the block with the inner thighs as we squeeze the block with the outer thighs. And we want to think about dropping the block with the feet from the inside of the foot, big toe edge, as we squeeze the block with the outside edge of the foot. Good. Let's inhale to reach our arms up towards the sky. Let's have our palms facing to one another. Let's go inhale to reach the arms up. Exhale to pull the arm bones into the shoulder socket. Inhale to reach the arms up. Exhale to pull the arm bones into the shoulder socket. Just do a couple shoulder push-ups here. And then inhale to reach the arms up as high as you can, 10 out of 10. And notice how that doesn't feel so good on the neck, so let those arm bones sink just a little bit back into the shoulder sockets. Great. Imagine you've got a block between your hands, trying to keep your pinky wrist and your thumb wrist stacked. Remember those feet can come onto the floor anytime you want. Keep holding your block. Inhale to bring the thumbs towards the floor. Exhale to take the wrist back over the shoulders. So maybe you can bring it a little closer to the thighs. So inhale, thumbs towards the floor, and exhale, arms towards the thighs. Again, listening to your body, you need a break, bring your feet to the floor. So see if you can get your yeah, pinky wrist, thumb wrist stack. Try and keep your pinky wrist as close to your opposite pinky wrist as your thumb wrist. So there's no rotation through the forearm. You want those hands to be as shoulders distance apart, and you're doing eight out of ten. So do less, right? I can tell because your face. <laughs> All right. The next time you inhale to bring those arms overhead, just keep those arms overhead and hold. 
Maybe that's too much. You can bring your arms beside you and just gently push the palms down into the floor. Big, beautiful breaths. So here you can add that arm. So shoulders to the ends. Yeah, there we go. So in. That's it. Let's see if we can do three more breaths.
Again, just take it to wherever you can take it, not worrying about what anybody else is doing. Let's see if we can get five more breaths here. It's an external rotation of the upper arm and a slight internal rotation of the lower arm. And then when you're ready, nice smooth inhalation to bring your arms back over, arms beside you, bend your knees as much as you can, trying to keep the thighs at a 90 degree angle with the floor, get your feet nice and close to your butt, and then bring your feet onto the floor. Let's go one more back bend. Arms beside us, press down into your feet, think shoulder heads to the floor, and then low back, mid back, upper back, lift. Think about moving the flesh of the butt away from the low back towards your calves. Push into the fingers, push into the palms. No popping of the rib cage, but you're continually thinking about tying the floating ribs to one another and to the floor. Imagine I'm coming around and think handstands on those shoulder heads. Really try and get the fronts of the shoulders as close to the floor as you can. Flesh of the butt lifts and slides towards the calves. Let's go 10 more rounds of breath here and then come down one this, one vertebra at a time, nice and slow. Keep that neutral pelvis. Great. 
As we exhale, we're going to let the right heel come to the floor, just the right heel. Keep the bend in the knee so the 90 degree angle stays. And then we're going to inhale back up. And then we're going to exhale the left leg down. And then we're going to inhale it back up. So whole leg, exhale down, keep the 90, inhale back up. Exhale the whole other leg down. Feel those wrists. So either way, your wrists are evenly rooting into the floor. And then lift up if the arms are overhead. So too much, right? So remember our chest. Right? So you feel how that's all up in here and these guys are lifting? There. That's a big no-no. Yeah, good. Right. So that has to all stay relaxed. Good. All right. So I'm going to bring this in just a smidge. Okay? And there's a shortening on this side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Perfect. So we want to really think of these pinky wrists, right? So I see. Okay. Well, okay. So I think that's what I see with you. Right, and that makes sense for that in your one, right? Rest whenever you need to rest. At no point do those shoulder heads pop up away from the floor. We want to think about melting them down and still connecting with the ribs. Thanks for what was this today? Try to keep your ankles as wide as your knees. Let's do two more. And then if you've got it in you, stay at that 90 degree angle.
Five more breaths. All right, so from here we're going to do thread and needle, and we can just do the seated version. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five more breaths, and then nice and slow, bring yourself down one disc one vertebra at a time. Pubic bone, hip bones are level. We're going to draw the right leg up. We're going to take the right ankle and just cross it over the left knee. Find that nice neutral pelvis. Pubic bone, hip bones are level. This is enough of a stretch. You can stay here. If you want just a little bit more stretch, you can put your foot on a block. If you wanted more than that, you can interlace your fingers behind your thighs, right hand on top of left hand. And if you wanted to use a strap, you can always use a strap. That will make your arms a little bit longer. And then think neutral pelvis. You may not be able to keep a neutral pelvis, but at least have those connections. No wrinkles in the ankles. It's like a tug of war of the arms and the legs. The legs are trying to move away from you, but the arms are pulling the legs to you. Particularly finding that outer right knee and moving it up away from the floor. Think about lengthening from inner groin to inner knee. Think about drawing back from outer knee to outer trochanter. Think outer trochanters come to one another. And then see if you can inject that femur on both legs back into the hip socket. So what we're doing a little less would be like that. All right, and then release the hands. Yeah, and then just take the legs and maybe this way. But then really think about keeping those hips level. So still getting a really good stretch, right? Yeah, but again, six out of ten instead of eight. And it's also nice on the neck and shoulders, right? When those five rounds of breath are complete, you're going to release your fingers. You're going to let that left foot float down onto the floor. Find that neutral pelvis once again. Bring your fingers onto your hip bones and draw the right knee towards your belly button. Uncross your leg. Straighten your leg out. So this one, Chantel, you can do just laying on your left side. And then nice and slow, we're going to lower that heel down towards the floor. Nice and slow. When that heel comes all the way down, you're going to tap the heel onto the floor, and then you're going to lift it the smallest amount that you possibly can. Think pelvis neutral, hips are not moving. And then slow as you can, you're going to drag that right heel towards your right sit bone. Exhaling, and then slow as you can, you're going to drag that right heel away from your right sit bone. Inhaling. So you're going to exhale to drag the heel to you as if you were rolling a marble towards your butt. And then you're going to inhale to roll that same marble away from your butt. At no point does your foot get any further from the floor than when it started. If this is easy peasy, you can always straighten out that left leg. But your neutral pelvis is your number one priority. Don't let those hip bones move up and down or to the armpit away from the armpit. If it's still really, really easy, you can then try to float that left heel. But pelvis is definitely your priority here. Ankle, knee, and hip are always running in a nice straight line. Lots of activity in both feet. The next 
time you straighten out that right leg, straighten it out to hold it out. Hanging out there, nice and neutral pelvis. Remember, if it tucks into your back at all, you bend that right knee more, and with an inhalation, start to bring that leg up as slow as you can. Nice and slow, pelvis not changing at all. All the way up, bending the knee if you need it to be lighter, or if you need to release the back, you don't want to feel it in the back. And then when it's all the way up, just see if you can hold it there. Again, pelvis as it moved. And then bend the knee, interlace your fingers over that shin, right hand on top of left, ankle, knee, and hip in a nice straight line, and just pull that right leg in. Let the neck and the shoulders relax, press through the soles of the feet. As you pull down with your hands, think about lifting the right thigh and the right calf back up into the hands. So if you were to let go, your leg would go springing up. And then think about taking your right butt and sitting it down into an imaginary chair as you move the flesh of your butt towards the edge of the mat. No tension in the neck and the shoulders. If it's hard for you to reach over the shin, you can always go behind the thigh, which will make your arms a little bit longer and allow you to relax the shoulder heads to the floor. And then release, let the right foot come to the floor, bend the left knee, both knees are bent, feet are on the floor, nice neutral pelvis. Lifting up the left foot, externally rotate the left leg at the hip and hook the left ankle on the outside of the right knee. And then just pause there, really find a level pelvis. And then commit to the pelvis moving as little as possible as you lift your right foot. You can put it on a block, you can interlace your fingers with the left hand on top behind the right thigh, or you could use a strap. And then create the resistance as the arms pull the legs to you, the legs are continuously working away from you. Gradually the arms are going to win the tug of war and the legs will start to draw towards your body. But really think about lifting the legs up away from the body, particularly finding that outer left knee and lifting it up towards the ceiling away from the floor. Think front thigh to back thigh, think calf kicking into shin, no wrinkles in the heels and lots of activity in the feet. Think about lengthening from inner groin to inner knee. Think about drawing back from outer knee to outer trochanter. Outer trochanters draw to one another. And then maybe some of us can pull those leg bones, those thigh bones, back into the hip socket, getting a really deep stretch. Watch the shoulders. If those shoulder heads are coming forward, you've got to pull the arm bones in a little bit, take the shoulder heads to the floor to find a nice neutral neck. When those five breaths are complete, you're going to release your fingers. You're going to let that right foot float down to the floor. Take your hands to your hips. Find that neutral pelvis where the pubic bone hip bones are level. Draw the left knee towards your navel to safely uncross, pivoting at the hip. And open that left knee up, straightening the left leg up towards the sky. 
Keep your fingers on your hips and make sure the hip doesn't move at all. Remember, the more you bend the left knee, the easier it will be. Don't let it tuck into your low back. As you slow as you can, lower your left heel down towards the floor, really taking your time. To keep that left hip bone from dropping to the floor, pull the right femur back into the hip socket. Once the heel touches the floor, then lift it just a little bit as if there was a marble underneath your heel. Pull the right femur into the pelvis, then front thigh, back thigh. Remember all the muscles you used when you had the blocks between your thighs? Find those same connections. Exhale to drag the left heel towards your left butt, anchoring knee and hip in a nice straight line. Inhale to drag the heel away. So now if and only if your pelvis is not moving at all and you're finding this easy, next time you bend the left knee, straighten out the right. Making sure the knees and the feet on both legs are in line, knees and toes pointing straight ahead. Then if it's easy peasy after a few more, you want to make it even harder and the right leg is straight, then you just float that right heel just a little bit and that'll make it even more challenging but always making that steady, neutral pelvis the priority. Slow as you can, and try and keep that heel the same distance off the floor. So bend, so bend, so bend, and drag your heel. Yeah, drag your heel the same distance. Slow it down. Heel doesn't lift away from the floor. It stays the same distance, so way slower. And you want to keep your ankle, the knee, and the hip. Just slow it down. So this is how you're going to strengthen the part of your hip that's not as strong as the other parts. Good. Let's do five more, and then we're going to straighten that leg to hold. So, so you either have to move your pelvis or bend this knee and move this hand. Okay. Let's do one more. Then when those five are done, straighten that leg and hold. And then slow, slow as you can, bring that left leg up. If it's heavy or hard, bend the knee. If it tucks into your back, bend the knee more. Slow as you can. And then when you're all the way up, you're going to hold. So good for our backs and our knees. Pull those fingers into the pelvis, fire up the feet. And then bend the left knee, interlace your fingers, left hand on top of right, over that left shin. Draw that leg to you with your arms as the leg is lifting back up into the hand. Because we're doing the left side, we're going to interlace with the left hand on top of the right. Always swapping the grip. Watch if those shoulder heads don't pop up away from the floor. So to get them down, we have to pull the arm bones into the shoulder sockets a little bit to release the shoulder heads to the floor. So we've got a nice neutral neck where if we were to close our eyes and open our eyes, we'd be looking straight up at the ceiling, not down towards the knee and not towards the wall behind us. But straight ahead. Big as you can. 
See if you can get those elbows to touch in front of your chest. If you want to sit on um, a poster, let me know. Okay. You feeling okay? Um, yeah, but maybe soon. Yeah, I'll try to do it. It's intense on the hips. You've got blocks. Just wedge those blocks in underneath your thighs. You want to try to have your feet as close to your butt as you can. Change direction with those circles. Big, slow, backward circles. Your 
Let's just do five more rounds of breath, just like that. Once those five rounds of breath are complete, bring your hands to your outer thighs, draw those legs to one another. We're going to roll off to the right side, right arm becoming a pillow for our head. Left palm's going to come in front of the chest, and with a nice inhalation and arm strength, we're going to push ourselves up, keeping that nice straight spine. And we're going to make our way into tabletop position. We're going to have those blocks nice and handy. We're going to wrap our fingers around the blocks. We're going to tuck our toes under. Knees and feet are hips distance apart. And we're just going to try and do a couple little gentle shoulder push-ups here. Just a few. It's an external rotation of the upper arm, an internal rotation of the lower arm. And see if you can get those elbow armpits to match so that they're symmetrical. And then push that floor away 10 out of 10. See what that feels like. Pull in your belly. Let the arm bone sink a little bit into the shoulder socket until it doesn't feel so intense and you can freely move your neck. So for you, Chantel, you can bring this guy to one side and step it forward. Okay, go a little bit wider with your feet than you're used to. All right? We're going to step that right foot forward, keeping the knees and the feet a hips distance apart. We're going to make sure that that right shin is at a 90 degree angle. So you can always take your block and measure it. You want to be able to serve an espresso off the top of that block, okay? So we don't want the, we don't want the knee on the inside or the outside of the ankle. We've got a straight line from big toe to heel. Then without that right shin moving, you're going to walk the left knee back as far as you can. Take that left knee as far back as you can. Press into the fingers, press into the palms, and just root into that left heel to lift the left knee up without the right butt popping up, okay? The trick here is to sit the right butt down into a chair and not lift the hips. More important to get the hip stretch than it is to come up higher. Think about pulling the right femur back and the left femur forward. Think about keeping that connection between the shoulder blades so that we don't have a valley between those shoulder blades that they're engaged. And keep in mind, you can come down anytime you want. Just a little bit, but too much espresso. So if this is feeling really easy peasy and balance is not an issue, then fix your gaze on one point. One hand comes up, other hand comes up. But don't let the hips lift. If the hips are lifting, come back down onto your hands. If balance is good, you're not wibbly wobbly, you can come back. And if balance is still good, you can bring those arms up. Try to get your pinky wrist as close together as your thumb wrist and lift the imaginary block up away from the crown. Really think about that left thigh lifting away from the floor as the right thigh and right butt work to the floor. We don't ever want to feel our wrists and we don't ever want to feel our knees. So really listen to your body. Let's see if we've got five more breaths left in us here. Really work on straightening out that back leg by rooting into the back heel. And when those five breaths are complete, you're going to let your arms come down, grabbing onto those blocks. Make sure that the right shin doesn't move forward or back, but you keep the knee and the ankle stacked as you reach the left knee back and bring it down onto the floor. We're then going to point the left foot, push the top of the left foot firmly into the floor, and drag the toes to you. So this time, the top of the foot is on the floor. So Alex, point your foot. Yeah. And then pull the toes to you to lift the ankle. But see if you can keep your baby toe on the floor as much as your big toe. Again, shin doesn't move, and we're just going to lean a little bit into those hips. Pull in your belly and zip it up. Maybe the hands can come onto the thigh if balance isn't tricky. Maybe you can bring your torso back. Maybe you can hold on to that imaginary block, keeping your fingers stacked, palms stacked, and bring those arms up. Lifting up as you're rooting your feet down. By really pushing into the left foot, we keep the weight out of that left knee, which is great. We don't want to sink right down to the floor. We want to pull those femurs in to lift our hips just 
just back a little bit up away from the floor. Big, big breaths. So remember, you can always do less. Listen to your body. Amazing for knees, backs, and hips. Let's see if we've got just a couple more breaths left in us here.
Take five more breaths here. When those five breaths are complete for you, you're gonna bring your arms down, pull your hips back slightly, step that left knee back, tuck your toes, knees and feet are hips distance apart, you can move your blocks to the side, straighten out those arms, make sure your index fingers are pointing straight forward and let the rest of the fingers spread from there, and start to bring your forehead down to the floor. Get a good grip on those toes. Slide the mat away from you, elbows are lifted. So think shoulders to the floor, but lift the arm bones up away from the floor. Make sure your hands are a generous shoulders distance apart. And then try to slide the mat away from your knees. Take your butt as close to your heels as you can, and then wrap your ribs. Think about the floating ribs coming to one another, and lift them up away from your thighs. Remember what it was like to do those shoulder push-ups and find that perfect 8 out of 10 connection through the upper back. Think about the inner lower arms going down towards the floor. Think about the outer upper arms going down towards the floor. Pull the elbows apart. Squeeze the upper arm bones in. Think about injecting the armpits forward towards the ears. And then one more time, take your seat away from your wrists. You can stay here in your puppy pose, or when you're ready, and if you're ready, you can come into your down dog. But really keep the ribs, really keep the connections. And then just stack your fists into the little rest. Nice. And this I found so good at this stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you want something under here too, I think I'm really like, there it gets too deep on the hips and knees. Find the base of the thumb and the index and root them and try and slide the mat away from your toes. All right, so let's even this out. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna pull your belly in a little bit here. Sit through that one. So belly to my fingers, good. So the shoulders are going down towards the ankles, but the arm bones are lifting up. So I just want you to zip your belly. Nice, you see how that shifts the pelvis. Good. Nice, and just lengthen it, just this comes in a little bit, yeah. And I really think front thigh to back thigh. Remember, you can rest anytime you like. Otherwise, let's see if you've got 10 more breaths left in us here. Right, so you feel how this is not symmetrical. Yeah, feel the difference, eh? When those 10 breaths are done, you're going to come into any child's pose you fancy, as long as you don't feel your knees, and as long as your forehead is resting on something. So either stacking your hands underneath your forehead, you can always lift your butt away from your feet if you want to feel your knees last. We should never feel our knees, we should never feel our wrists in yoga. With each exhale, feel yourself letting go, thinking of one thing in your life that keeps getting in the way. And as you exhale, let go of that one thing. It could be something physical, like pain. It could be something mental, like a negative thought. It could be something emotional, like a feeling. But with each exhale, let go of that one thing that keeps popping up. And then with each inhalation, invite in the opposite of whatever it is you're letting go of. So with each exhale, let go. And with each inhale, manifest. Draw in the opposite of whatever it is you no longer need. Wide, I want you to touch your toes. Get your toes to touch. Nice, and take your knees wide. 
This is where I'm sure not. Yeah. And then start to see, see the difference there. And I want you to put your knees, and I want you to stack your fists and put your forehead on your fists. Like Dave's thing beside you. So elbows wide. Yeah. So now you feel how your neck is now in line with your spine. Good. And then this straightens. Let's take 10 more breaths here, really staying very present with your mantra for each and every one of those 10 breaths. Inhale to bring it forward like Superman. 
exhale to hold. Inhale to take it out like an airplane. Exhale to hold. And just keep moving like that. The only thing that's moving is the arm. But the shape of the arm is pretty much exactly the same as when it was on the floor, only now the wrist is straight. Try to keep that arm the same distance off the floor as it moves forward and back. And then let's take it out like an airplane and hold. Breathe in. And then let's bring it forward like Superman and hold. Soles of the feet are going to clap, knees are going to come apart, and the 
starts to come down over those legs. We want quite a bit of space between our pubic bone and our heels. We want to be making more of a square than a diamond. Slowly coming down. If it's easy to put your forehead down, you can. Other options are to use your elbows on the floor or on the legs and rest your forehead there. Sometimes a block is nice. Towards the end of the practice, it's nice to have your forehead resting on something. It's very common to the parasympathetic nervous system, so just finding what works for you. Sometimes two blocks is nice. With each inhale, feel the whole back body expand, and with each exhale, feel the whole back body just very gently contracting. Let's take 10 more full deep breaths here. Breaths are complete for you. You're going to come up. We're going to draw our knees together and straighten out those legs. We're going to take that right leg over the left leg, interlacing our fingers over the right shin. Nice big inhale to lift and lengthen. So, Chantel, let's sit on the bolster um, and then give yourself that and then uh, twist the opposite way of us. We're going to sound good and you can even have the right foot on its own side. So nice big inhale, left hand stays on the right shin, right hand comes behind you. Really think of a nice straight spine, shoulder heads back, arm heads forward. Keep that left leg nice and active. So either keeping the 90 degree angle with the left arm here or taking the left arm over the knee and find the 90 degree angle there. No wrinkles in the backs of the wrists. I like to think about back handing into the left hand. Shoulders and armpits are level. Pulling the belly in and up. So Kate, wrong leg. That's good. That feels good. Everyone else is twisting with the right leg and twisting that way. Yeah. Um, Just change change legs next time. That's good for that. And then nice and slow, we're gonna unwind back to center, interlace our fingers over that shin. Big inhale to lift and lengthen, shoulders back. Right foot comes to its own side, extends, left knee bends, take the left foot over the right leg. Swap the interlacing to the left hands on top. Nice big inhale to lift and lengthen. Push your butt down. So again, shoulders remain relaxed. Right hand stays on the left leg as the left hand comes behind us. We're either keeping a 90 degree angle with the right arm here, or if it's available, taking the elbow outside the knee and finding the 90 on the other side as you continue to twist. Legs don't move at all, making sure that the pelvis doesn't shift. Fire up both sets of feet. And gradually you can turn that gaze behind you, keeping the shoulders and the armpits level and really pulling your belly in, up, and back. Winding back to center, interlace your fingers, big inhale to lift and lengthen. Left foot comes to its own side and extends. Try to double, you can do a headstand if that's appropriate. If that's not appropriate, you can do Supta Virasana. Everybody else, let's come onto our backs. Knees and feet together, hands behind the thighs, make a nice C, and then come down nice and slow, one distal vertebra at a time. Arms are going to come out beside you, palms facing up. Otherwise, straighten one leg and then the other leg as you come into Shavasana. Closing your eyes. If you want a neck bolster, put your left hand on your belly. And if you want a blanket, put your right hand on your belly.
Eyes are closed and remain closed. Palms are always facing up towards the sky. Being as still as you can be. Gently beginning to wake up your body from the inside by deepening your breath. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. With a nice big inhale, stretch your arms. And exhale to let your arms fall down heavy. As you start to bend your knees and walk your feet towards your seat. With an exhale, rolling off to the right. Nice inhale to push yourself up, keeping that spine nice and straight. Coming into a comfortable seated position, let's bring our hands into Namaskara so we can end with a nice big group home before we dedicate the merit of our practice. Um. Namaste. 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 Thanks for coming.